Chi. I had this wine tasting, wine dinner thing mm. this weekend. But the thing is, I don't want to serve beer and just, you know, yung normal no iced tea. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, I want it a little elevated, a little more grown up. Okay. So, I'm here with you so that I could ask for tips and tricks on how I could actually pair the food that I will serve. Does it matter? Can't I just bring out whatever, you know, wine, wine benefit I have at home and just pair it with whatever takeout that I end up ordering? To be honest, it technically doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you drink what you want to drink with whatever it is that you want to eat. The concept of food and wine pairing is actually being able to bring out the best in each component. For some reason, you choose the wrong wine to go with the food, it will affect the taste of the wine. So is there a general rule that we have to watch out for when we talk about the balance of the food and the wine? In general, there are two kinds of pairing. Um, there is what you call the complementary pairing, where you actually pair food and wine that are complete opposites of each other. For example, it's acidity by pairing it with food that is fatty or oily. But you also have what you call congruent pairing, where you pair the intensity of the food or the flavor of the food with the wine. So, for example, dessert will go very, very well with wine that is equally sweet um, or sweeter. Opposite to track? Yes. Or the same things go together? Correct. I read somewhere online while I was preparing for this dinner that red wine goes with like red sauces, red, red meat, meat. Yeah. red meat, red anything, and then white wine goes with like white meat, white sauce, white and does that hold? Um, I think classic pairings are classic for a reason. Like for example, steak and like a nice Malbec or Cabernet Sauvignon, which are both red. Yeah, I think there's a little <laughs> piece to you. So we can just experience the pairing thing more. Mm. Um, I have something sour, I have something spicy, you know, general flavors, salty and sweet. Okay. And I guess I'm asking for your help to really experience the flavors and the pairing. Okay, so the first thing I would do is to actually pour a wine that I think will go with the first dish. <laughs> this is like a chicharron with a little bit of acidity. So in general, for me, sour complements sour. So acidic wines, when you pair it with acidic food, the acidity or your perception of the acidity in the wine goes down and the fruitiness of the wine comes out. The first thing we should do is taste the wine just to find out, does this have the acidity that we want? Okay, let's taste it. It's tart, right? So, as you said, this is sour. Let's maybe eat a piece. And then take a sip of our white wine. Oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Because you introduced something that is also sour, what it did was that it actually brought down the acidity, your perception. And it brought out the fruitiness in the wine. It really does more. The food does matter more. It does. It does. In general, spicy food is very challenging to pair with wine because um, spicy food, when you pair it with a dry red wine, for example, yeah. it amplifies the tannin and the dryness of the wine. It makes the wine unpleasant. Tannin in wine makes the food even spicier. When your food is spicy, I suggest that you enjoy it with a sparkling wine that has a little bit of sweetness because the sweetness actually neutralizes spice. It makes the food less spicy. Nice. And the spiciness dials down the sweetness in the wine. I mean, a lot of people tell me they don't like sweet wine, but when they pair it with something spicy, they actually start to enjoy it. Let's now try because I know you are excited to try. <laughs> Whoa, that's spicy. <laughs> okay. Now let's go back to the wine. Oh. Mm. Okay. Well, how does that feel? What does this? I, the bubbles do something, here, right? I don't know what I feel. <laughs> That's the thing. No. Um. I think the bubble sort of resets your palate. Yeah. It actually washes away the the spice, and it also allows you to eat more spicy food. Because if this were a dry wine, and a suggestion, ko actually, if you're open to it, yeah, is you try it with a red wine. I am. <laughs> experiment. I am wearing. Go try it, try it. Because I okay, think. I will try it. Surprisingly, it's not so bad. There is. I feel tannins. Yeah. And it's. But this makes it super spicy. But then also, yes. my mouth is burning. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That is just. Can I get water? Chicken is normally considered a white meat. Mm -hmm. 
I would suggest that for fried chicken, you can actually go and have um, rosé with it. Mm. For me, that's a classic pairing, okay. rosé and fried chicken. Let's taste it. And then, let's take a bite of our fried chicken. <laughs> yes, it actually does our rosé a favor. Right? I mean, <laughs> makes it more not not fruity. I mean, the rosé is good to begin with, but I think pairing it with the food just made it sing. So our last is a cheesecake. And with, with anything sweet, I would say, yeah, break out your big guns, your desserts, your, your dessert wine. Anything sweet, um, sparkling. Maybe you take a sip of the sweet sparkling wine or the off-dry sparkling wine first. This is quite fatty because it is a cheesecake after oh. all. So acidity, fat, and sweet, sweet. Cuts through the fat. Yeah. You like it? Definitely different from how we paired it with this. Mm. It took out wine. the sweetness from the wine. Yeah. And it just now tastes like a regular sparkling. Like, so not a brute, but like a family. Yeah. Like an off dry, maybe. And if you also want to learn more about wine, not like all of us here at winery.ph, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more Wine 101. Until the next drink, cheers! cheers.